Turn this around. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Five Minutes from Full and the Office. And there comes Pastor Mark. He's got some more of that good flavored coffee. His lover never fails. Oh, yeah. We're just, uh, there we go. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Blueberry cobbler. Cheers. Woo. Blueberry cobbler. Let's see if I get this. Okay, so it's been a while since two of us have been on. <laughs> Sons of Thunder, I guess. We'll see how that thunder rolls today. Let the thunder roll and the lightning flash. I'm you know, I always right. think of, I always think of like, country trash. <laughs> I, I like that. I, I also think of uh, like, like worldwide wrestling when I think. Oh of yeah, WWF. You know, they yeah. like, you know, because like you think it what was it James and John. Yeah. Oh yeah. And uh, whenever you called them the Sons of Thunder, I always thought that. the Sons of the Thunder coming <laughs> at you. You know, <laughs> and so they're gonna break. Don't worry, I won't be that crazy. We won't. Time. Neither one of us. So we feel like but, it sometimes. Man, my grandmother loved. Will, uh, all Star Wrestling. Yeah. I mean, of all things. She, My favorite was always crazy. The Rock. The Rock. See, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. To, um, Chief J. Strongball. Yeah. I remember him. <laughs> there was way When back. I was a kid, it was uh, like Hulk uh, Hogan and yeah. Rowdy Roddy Piper. Yeah, Hulk Hogan. Yeah. All those crazy. Oh, you know Ted DiBiase? You remember no. Million Dollar Man? We actually did a uh, um, an outreach event. Mm. Where this guy that I was some going to, this is yet. when I was in college, yeah. got all these old retired wrestlers going. Oh, wow. And he had Ted DiBiazzi. Oh, my goodness. Was like uh, the key headline that's, that's speaker. Cool. Huh. And what they did was they did the, you know, they did their wrestling yeah, thing yeah. and got, you know, <laughs> goofy. Yeah. Yeah, but then yeah. at the end, they brought the gospel message and oh, how all nice. these guys that's who good. were in wrestling. Yeah. Came to know the Lord. That is, that and is cool. It, you know, it was it was yeah, really cool. It was cool. a lot of fun. Wow. A lot of people came out. But anyway, yeah, that was totally random. That's that was right. totally. It's good to be random. Um, we relate to cuff. random. I'm sure people who are watching this. Yeah, I, there's been a lot of random. random happening in my life mm. lately. Mm. Um, in fact, we did something totally random last night too. Mm. Um, somebody from, from, from my week? church wanted to just give us vegetables. Oh, and. Uh, they're like, yeah, you might, I mean, you might come picking them up. We're like, oh, yeah, no problem. Then I'm like, I got this crazy idea. And I decided, I, and I talked to Rachel first, yeah. of course. And I said, <laughs> what do you think about us going over there and just making dinner for everybody? Like, huh. for, for yeah. us, for them, yeah. and we just have some fellowship. I was like, well, you know, call them up, see if they're yeah. up for it. And, and sure enough, they were. And so we made this big, huge wok. I mean, I brought my wok and everything, oh, yeah. and I got yeah, the whole stir fry going. Yeah. And we just had yeah. such an mm. amazing time together. Oh, uh, it was really God. cool. So Fellowship over food. Uh oh, That's we it. need a prayer request for Robin oh, yes, in Ann yes. Arbor. His eyes, but his back is really bad and can't get into the pain clinic until next wow. Wednesday. He is having trouble walking today with the pain. So great. It was four, four years ago. Like it was four like, years ago. Yeah, oh, like it remember. was yeah. four years ago. Yeah. So before we even get we started, why don't we yeah. do that? And yes. I'll let you lead off and yes. then I'll close it. Lord, we just, uh, by way of uh, spirits move, just lay hands on, on this computer. And Anita's uh, text about Robin. Father, he had such a good time up north when they took this uh, week and a half, two week break. Uh, Lord, and, and you might be thinking, well, now I'm suffering for it. Help him not to beat himself up, Lord. And I pray, Father, for a complete healing on his back because he can't even walk to take care of the other issues like with his eyes and so forth. So, Lord, we believe that you are a God who heals. Your word has tell us, uh, told us that so many times. I'm thinking uh, especially about Psalm 103 uh, that declares it very emphatically this morning as well as so many other Verses in your word. So, Lord, I pray for a touch on his back that would just eradicate the pain and give him comfort physically, not just emotionally about it. And let him just commit himself to you in that today, Lord. I pray you give him, uh, resurrect that faith that's inside of him already. Mm -hmm. Tap on it and raise it to life yes, that he might place his faith in you in this and just know that you're going to take care of him. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lord God, yes. we uh, just continue this prayer Jesus. for Robin. Yes. And uh, Father, I hope everybody who's listening, just uh, lift him up yes. in prayer right Jesus now, Lord God. Right now. Uh, we just ask for your healing hand to be over Robin's yes. soup right now. We lift him up to yes. you. We know he's hurting. 
We know mm. he's in pain, yes. and he's in the kind of pain that he was in four mm. years ago. Jesus. And uh, Father God, we just pray Jesus. that you will relieve him of this pain. Oh. We pray that you will just, with a touch of your finger, yes. Jesus, uh, right. just finger of take that pain out of him right now, Lord mm. Jesus, so that he can get his eyes checked, mm. that he can get through each day, that he can actually walk mm. normal again. Uh, Father, we pray your healing hand yes, over Jesus. Robin right now, and Praise we lift God. him up to you in yes, the power of Jesus' name. Yes, Amen. Sir. So, sharing yes. on the north. Oh, thank you, Jurgen. So, Jurgen, mm -hmm. right now. So, we are also yes. live right. on the North Athens page. So, yes. I won't re-share it again. So, mm -hmm. uh, I sometimes do that. You're yeah. gonna share it, and then I yeah. don't check, and then yeah. I share it. That's and so, right. um, so yeah. So, a lot of random stuff happened. Do you want me to kind yeah, of start off yes. and just kind of tell them yeah. what I've been doing? Yes. Um, That's good. One of the things that is easy to do, even. And, and, and pastors are not immune to this, mm -hmm. is kind of losing step with your quiet time, losing step with your, mm -hmm. uh, what we like to call our rhythm of life. And, and so one of the things that I have personally been doing, this has just been for myself, this is what's kind of come out of my own personal story, because I've heard so many stories of people during the quarantine going, man, my my faith has just grown yeah, and yeah. it has just my quiet time has just been mm -hmm. amazing. And I'm like, that's good, but yeah, my, mine hasn't that. done that so yeah. well. And and it's not that um not because of just not wanting to do it. It's not mm -hmm. ever an issue of that. It's no. just a matter of again, in fact, um oh, I forget what it's called, but we get ourselves so busy doing things because mm -hmm. we didn't we haven't really slowed down. No. During no, quarantine. Really, actually, it's I mean, in fact, I, I feel like I've yeah. worked harder during quarantine. <laughs> yes. Even uh, when the other, you know, we have all, we don't have all these activities going. Mm -hmm. I'm doing all the things that I didn't have a whole lot of time to do before. Right. Um, so I've learned a lot of uh, time. Ma I'm learning, <laughs> learning yeah. time Process. management. Yes. And uh, so, but one great way that I've, I have always found to get back into a rhythm of life mm -hmm. with our walk with the Lord is to start in the Proverbs. Mm. And I started a few days ago. Uh, in fact, I think it was Monday. Mm. Just got started, and I was like, what day is it okay? It was the 6th. So I started on Proverbs, Proverbs 6, 6, and we've just been kind of going through. Cool. So basically for the next 30 days, mm -hmm. or 31 days, mm, yes, 30 months, I'm so. going to be, I'm personally going to be going through the Proverbs and, um, this week, you've been kind of just moving with the Spirit yeah, and whatever right. He lays on your heart that mm -hmm. day is what you've been sharing. Yeah. So, And there's time and place for all of that all stuff, of um, which is cool. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times we've been, uh, you know, we've been doing the tag team yes. where we've like, okay, we're going to follow this right. theme all the way through. And then so until we're so it yep. says stop. Yep. And then we get to points to where we kind of go off and we mm. do our own thing. Yeah. And but it's Productive. great to always be able to I I'm loving yeah. this. I oh, love I this so. conversation yes. stuff because um to it's me like it the just road makes to it, yeah, yeah, I mean it just <laughs> makes it more real. Mm -hmm. And I'm not only talking to you yeah, and yeah, I no. are not just talking so to a screen. Who's listening? <laughs> and um, but one cool thing happened yesterday. Is when I was doing my podcast, mm. uh, I had somebody listening, and he was on the road. And oh, he was a truck driver, oh, wow. and he was out in Delaware. That's cool. And he's like, "Yeah," and I put you over the CB. So whatever wow. I was broadcasting Amazing. in that moment was going out to all these truck drivers <laughs> over the CB so cool. radio. I don't know how he did it, but it was really cool. He held it up there, and I don't know what he did, but wow. he, you know. So praise God that. Yeah. His word is getting out, yes. no matter how good a quality it yeah. is or how good right. the video is. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. those are um, those are nice things to have, definitely. Right. And yeah. I would love to be able to better, do but, it better. But, yeah. um, but the point of it all is to get the word of God to as many people as we can, yes. and that's why we do this. That's um, right. This exactly. all started so for me. Now you've been doing this longer than I have, mm -hmm. but this all started off for me in January. Mm -hmm. And I, in fact, I was sick in January. I don't know what I had. It's probably, you know, maybe it was COVID nineteen. <laughs> yeah. you know, I don't know. But so I've already had it, right? Yeah, I don't know. Right. No, I don't know that. Um, but whatever it was, I was really sick, mm -hmm. and I was at home, and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna. And and my wife had gotten me this new devotional mm. book by John Eldridge, and I've shown it yeah, a few I mean, times. Yeah. Um, 
uh, and it's called Restoration Year, mm-hmm. and that was a that was my first kind of start to the year, and mm-hmm. I was man, I was just crushing it. You yeah. know, I was every day. I'm journaling. I'm praying. Uh-huh. Getting into the word, and um, and then uh, life starts to get yeah. busy again. Yeah. Um, and As it will. Those are the benefits of being sick. Is when yeah. you're home, you have That's nothing it. else to right. do, um, except get better, mm-hmm. get in the word. Right. That's right. So anyway, I know I've talked no, a whole good. bunch at random, but yeah. we're going to dig into Proverbs chapter nine no, this that's morning. Good. No, that's good. So yes. if you guys are there, or if you're not. Um, look up Proverbs chapter 9, and while I take my sip of this amazing coffee, I'll let you guys find that. Okay. Talk about wisdom again. This is good. Yeah. Yep. Two days ago, it was talking about um, um, the story of seduction, mm-hmm. and so avoiding the temptress, avoiding mm. um, you know, being drawn in by, yeah. by a woman, and I talked a little bit about how you know, men are visually stimulated, yes. and so we all have to be careful of those things, mm-hmm. and always never think that you're not susceptible to, yeah. well, to uh-huh. sexual temptation, mm-hmm. because the minute That's we true. think that we're not susceptible yes. to it is when Satan's going to right. get you. He'll get you, and that doesn't even mean when you're on your guard that you're not susceptible right. to yeah. it. But the difference is, is being tempted and giving into temptation right. are very, very, very different. different. Because yes. Jesus, like I said the other day, was tempted yes, he was. many times, right. but he didn't, give in. he didn't give in. And that's the difference. And so yeah. then yesterday we got into wisdom mm-hmm. and wisdom's appeal. So yes. we are going to talk about today wisdom versus foolishness. Mm-hmm. And good morning to everybody who's on this morning. morning I see Shirley Heath. Yes. And Jurgen and Anita and see my mom. Uh, so is. good morning, mom. Good to see you. Yes. So she's listening from Ohio. Ohio. And yeah. so here we go. Um, and I'm reading out of the, just so you guys know, uh, the Christian Standard Bible today. Yes. And what are you going out for? And New King James. All right. So we got New King James and Christian Standard Bible. All right. Wisdom has built her house. She has carved out her seven pillars. She has prepared her meat. She has mixed her wine. She has set her table. She has sent out her female servants. She calls out from the highest points of the city. Mm -hmm. Whoever is inexperienced, enter here. To the one who lacks wisdom, she says, Come, eat my bread, and drink the wine I have mixed. Mm. Leave inexperience behind, and you will live. Pursue the way of understanding. I'm going to pause there for a minute because I see uh, you're taking some notes down. I like the words, different words. um, So I think we ought to just kind of pick this apart a little Mm -hmm. bit as we go. So I just did the first six verses. Mm. What kind of popped out at you there, Ralph, as we were... As well, we the, con- the continuation of uh, Solomon's personifying wisdom as if she were a person. And uh, chapter 8 sort of did that from a different perspective. And it was so strong that at some point, I'm not sure how many people have noted that. I'm sure people, theologians and students of the word in the past, but you almost see Jesus in, in that one, chapter 8. Yeah, oh, yeah, especially toward the end. Yeah, toward the end. Yeah, I was, absolutely. The Lord possessed me. And, and so mm-hmm. I, I really believe it's almost a prophetic indication of preexistence. So here mm-hmm. in this chapter, same idea, personified wisdom. She's a person. She's always a woman, it seems like. It's kind mm-hmm. of interesting. Um, I think of guys calling their trucks by the female gender. Yeah. Oh, their ships, the boats right. back oh, home. Yeah. And, and I don't know if women are offended by that. I think it's kind of a neat thing, actually. But anyway, we won't go down. I think of it more as a term of endearment. Yeah, yeah sure, endearment. affectionate. Mm-hmm. And so <clears throat> there are lots of action words here. She's, You've got carved, my New King James says, hewn out, uh, prepared, uh, slaughtered her meat, uh, furnished or set her table. It's interesting that, <clears throat> excuse me, when she, it says that she, whoever's simple, your version said inexperienced. Oh, right. mm-hmm. uh, understanding for wisdom. And they're probably synonym, synonyms, even in the Hebrew. So, forsake, meaning to leave. And Mark put, uh, had pursue in the CSB. And I've got to uh, go in the way of understanding. So, mm. um, I mean, she's, she's making no bones about it. 
um, she crying out for people to listen to her instead of foolishness. Mm -hmm. And there are two voices. Yeah, crying out for our attention. Yeah, the, the one of foolishness personified, mm -hmm. and sometimes Solomon will do that. Almost give a whole chapter to that, or a bulk of it. And then wisdom calling out. And which one will we listen to? Yeah, you know. I like what verse, and I like how this version reads it too. Mm -hmm. um, I like what you said. Read your read your verse six real quick. Yeah, sure. Forsake foolishness and live, and go in the way of understanding. Now, and I like that. That's good. Mm -hmm. I also like it says, "Leave inexperience yeah. behind, and you will live." I like and then that. I like this word, "pursue," yeah, the way of understanding. Yeah. And I love this idea of pursuit mm -hmm. um, because, um, you know, when I think of, um, I think of a husband and wife, how the husband usually is in pursuit of the wife, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, in and you're pursuing that love, you're pursuing that relationship. Mm -hmm. And I think of how God, I believe, how God pursues uh, us. Yeah, first and foremost. You know what I mean? Yes. And so that yeah. idea of pursuit, mm -hmm. that that desire for relationship, mm -hmm. is so big. Yeah. Um, when we when we think about what that looks like in our lives, yeah. how are we pursuing God? You right. know, and it's the same thing. And this really goes back to what I've been struggling with through the quarantine. Mm -hmm. Is I, I've had to. I, I'm now having to ask myself, how am I pursuing? Right my relationship with God. Yeah. And it's not a work. This no. is not a works thing. No, this not is at a all. <laughs> this is a no. thing of, it could be seen that way. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. So it's good that you and make so that adjustment. It's not about words. It's, it's about this desire that comes yeah. from our heart yeah. that comes from following Jesus. Yeah. And there's days. There are days I'm not I'm you know a lot of times I've I've heard the the phrase I'm just not feeling it. Mm -hmm. I'm not feeling it today. Yeah. Yeah. And those are the times yeah, to really. where you have to pursue it. Yeah, right. And those are those are hard things to do, especially when we're not feeling it. Because mm -hmm. I will, I'm a big feelings person. Mm -hmm. I'm Same here. Touchy feely. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. a hugger. We, yeah. you know, hand to whatever. You know, so so quarantine I think has been hard for yes for guys like us yeah. because you know we're the uh, and give yeah. you know I, oh, my boys geez. run up and give me a big old bear. I'm like, if you aren't choking me, son. We're not really, hugging. you know what I mean? Like, I so I, I'm yeah. always like, come on up, you know, yeah. give me a bear hug. And yeah. Nathan, little Nathan, who's about that big, <laughs> will come up and he'll like literally choke he me. He was the one sleeping. Yeah, he was the one. Uh, yeah, he crawled up into bed last problem. night. Yeah. And, uh, um, but it's that pursuit of relationship. Mm -hmm. And that's, this is just another reminder to me yeah. that when we are pursuing, mm -hmm. um, the way of understanding. Yeah. See, I get in trouble a lot for being long-winded. And you obviously we were already 18 minutes into this because I've been long-winded. <laughs> but I want to have understanding yes. of what we're talking about. I want to have understanding of when someone's talking to me, That's I want to understand mm -hmm. where they're coming from. And so I have this sometimes overzealous desire for people to understand where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. And that's usually... When I lose my seven-year-old, because <laughs> I'm like, I'll son, I, I want to talk to you, yes, and yes. he's like, "Oh, I'm dead. I just, you know, I get it, <laughs> I get it, I got it, I'm like, damn it, yeah, you know." Yeah. Or sometimes, you know, Rachel will like, "Sweetheart, I really just need you to say it in three sentences." <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah, I do that." Too. Oh. And have you ever read the Lord of the Rings? The yes, actual, yes. The book? So you know about yeah. uh, Treebeard. Mm, no, I, that's escaping me. Tree beards, this this tree thing, and he yeah. is like a he's like kind of like a watcher of the woods. He's mm -hmm. kind of like a, yeah. a what they call him, like a, a tree or a, a like shepherd. Groot. Like Groot. Yeah. yeah, he's kind of like Groot, Groot yeah. but 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 Groot. he's much more long winded. Yeah, and and uh, yeah, his name is Treebeard, and he's called an Ent. Uh -huh. And he's in one of his lines were in old Entish. Mm. It takes a long time to say anything mm. in old entish because mm. we don't say anything unless it's worth taking a long time <laughs> to say. Yeah. And you got these two little hobbits and they're going, just get to the yeah. point, yeah. <laughs> right? 
and and so I struggle with that. I have to be careful with that. But yeah. but being able to pursue understand, and that's that desire right. to pursue understanding. So yeah. as we move forward, mm. you have had some coffee before I got here. Too. <laughs> Why don't you read? Um, from seven, and you just stop where you feel like okay. there's a good stopping point. Well, yeah, probably 12. Uh, we um, stopped. It. Okay, all right. Yeah, so seven sections. to 12. So, um, and then I, I want to share a little bit on this idea of pursuit. Awesome. But, I'll, but I'll read this first. He who corrects a scoffer gets shame for himself. Uh, and he who rebukes a wicked man only harms himself. Mm. Do not correct a scoffer, lest he hate you. It's kind of like what Jesus said, wipe the dust off your feet. Mm -hmm. Those kind of people... You waste your time because you don't want to listen. I think that's the idea there. Rebuke a wise man, wise man, and he will love you. See, because he just wants to get wiser for the good reasons. Give instruction to a wise man and he will be still wiser. Teach a just man and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is a beginning of wisdom. Love that. And it, that's almost like an implication about the just or wise man is that the first thing he did was what? Fear or respect the Lord. And that's why he's on the right road. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For by me, your days will be multiplied and years of life will be added to you. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself. It's not talking about selfishness. It's just the idea that you'll be better off. And if you scoff, you will bear it alone. Nobody will listen. So, well, that's, there's a lot in that section. Absolutely. Uh, but just this idea of pursuing... Um, Understanding, pursuing God. I was just thinking about what motivates that pursuit. And I think it needs to be a proper perspective of who God is. Because sometimes we see him as the ancient of days, mm. wizened ways and white hair and, and the vision that John had and, and Ezekiel and Daniel uh, of the ancient of days up there. And he's just stoic. Mm. No more. When the scriptures are just as equal with that picture of God as they are an, an affection and emotional God. Mm. Look at the prodigal son story. I was just talking about that a few, well, it was Father's Day. And I said, this is not a story about a wayward son. It's a story about a father's love. Mm -hmm. His hot and heavy and wild love for us. Mm -hmm. That, like John says, we love him because he what, first loved us. Mm -hmm. So I think what would peak or touch the nerve of my hunger and pursuit that's always there, but sometimes it's just kind of laying there dormant mm -hmm. is this perception or idea or truth about God is that he's always pursuing me. He's not up there just unemotional. Like so many of us like to like to, or just simply see him because we feel like if we attribute Emotions to God that were being disrespectful. And I'm like, wow, that's not what the scripture says. Mm -hmm. That's not what the prodigal son story gives us as a narrative. Right. It is God's love through the Father. And Jesus makes no comment about it. Mm -hmm. He just gives the story, a parable. And we're left to, to interpret it. And to me, it's like, all I see is the love of the Father changing the prodigal son's perspective. Because mm -hmm. when he lifts his head up and sees that love coming at him, he's totally changed because mm -hmm. he's not, he doesn't think he's worthy or ready to go up the hill to the Father. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter because the Father in his wild love, as I think uh, the author you just mentioned, uh, John Eldridge. Oh, John Eldridge, yeah. A lot of his books deal with that wild love of God, mm -hmm. right? That he's just coming running at him. To me, what, 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 what other motivation? There isn't. Mm -hmm. If there's any other motivation, it's going to it's going to compete with right. this, this motivation. And God says he's a jealous God. Mm -hmm. So in my pursuit of God, I want to always know that it's a response to his love coming at me. Otherwise, I think I'm going to fail in some way. Yeah. It's going to be, let me show this as an example. I got a to-do list here. It keeps me anchored. And I'm not quitting. It's good. It says to-do today, Zoom mother. Uh, pick up Andrew for coffee. Uh, Zoom with Mark. Call Donald. Do bulletins. I got it all here. So I won't forget. But I don't want, I don't have, have fellowship with God on there. No. That's got to be here. 
yeah. the heart, right? Yeah. And my response, and if it feels like sometimes I'm out of the rhythm uh, and I want it back, yes, get the hook into Proverbs. Yeah. Whatever, and yes, have it. Like today, my rhythm was upset. Very small way, no. Mm -hmm. Maybe like yours, you got so much going on, brother. But I'm I'm half asleep and 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 I slept in just a little bit. Usually it's five five thirty. I get out. Today was six six thirty, and I hear this, <laughs> you know, oh, man. wherever he is, yeah. he's downstairs. I yeah. gotta go out and pee, Dad. That's my old uh, It's like, oh, I haven't done my prayers yet. It's... You think Sam would have understood that? Yeah. So I didn't holler down, Sam, just a minute. So my I'm rhythm, here, I'm yeah, praying. It's like, oh Come shoot, on. my rhythms. So you don't want to be OCD about that rhythm, right? And discipline. Absolutely. So it comes in mode. God says, "Chill, son. You're gonna water the garden. You're gonna walk the dog. It's all good. It's yeah. All cool. Just talk to me. Don't don't so, like my. Yeah. I'll give you Go another ahead. for instance. Like for me this morning, I slept in a little bit because mm -hmm. I forgot to turn my alarm on, yeah. and so I get up. Rachel's already out of bed. She's doing her quiet time, yeah, yeah. which was cool because yeah. we're trying to figure out how to have our quiet times like separate, both and, yeah, together, yeah, and together and separately. Yeah, yeah. And we're trying to reclaim that rhythm together. Right. And so technically, today was my day to, to get up and get out and Earlier, yeah. do it. And I totally forgot to set my alarm. And Rachel was like, I oh, already you. got the dog. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I'm oh, sorry, you know. And yeah. but then. My quiet time actually was shared with my son, Caden. Mm -hmm. And we had and this cool. time yeah. sitting in the chair downstairs. Yeah. And because usually like his first thing, he's like, I want to watch a show or yeah, I want to, yeah. you know, can I watch? And we're trying to get away yeah. from that. Yeah. And I'm like, no. I said, dad needs to have a screen. He's like, can I do my quiet time with you? Oh, God, and I'm like, yeah, God, sure. Cool. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. how often does that get to, yeah. to happen? That's you know? Right. So I'm like, yeah, let's do it. I'm never going to deny him that yeah. uh, kind of thing. And yeah. so we did. We did his mm -hmm. quiet time together, and and then mine got pushed off a little bit. But it, mm -hmm. you know, you still have it. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. but I like I like the fact that you said you know we've got to not be OCD about, about it because yeah. yes. then we then we're just that makes it harder. Yeah, it's just a checkoff list. Yeah, you that, don't yeah. want it to just be no, another checkoff right. list because yeah. that's how. Excuse me. That's how it started with Caden. Mm -hmm. The first couple days, he's like, well, "Let's just get this done real quick." Okay, okay good. I'm done. Boom. Show. And I'm like, "No." Yeah. I said, "Son, I go. Let's enjoy. We need to enjoy this." Yeah. I'm like, "This is something that we we're having time with God." Mm -hmm. In fact, we forgot to pray right after we were done because that was something we did. But I'm like, "Hey, before I go to work, I said, remember, we'll, we'll, we forgot to do something." He's like, "What?" I'm like. We forgot to pray, mm -hmm. so we should do that. Yeah. He's like, "Oh yeah!" Like yeah. he's still he's still excited about it, That's which true. I hope that never yeah, ends. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, time tells everything, yes. and God is you know. But I think God, you know, God sees what we try to do as That's parents. Right. Yes, and so, um, I'm, but I'm gonna soak it up for all it's worth oh, while yeah. we got sure. it yes. those times. So because it will end up bringing him back if he ever strays. Yeah, you'll remember. That. Yep. Yeah, something so, about the release of, of those happy chemicals. I know I talk about this a lot. When we do the right thing, mm -hmm. God's wired us physically to confirm the affections that we feel emotionally, yeah. that it's not just some abstract thing that we're making up. Yeah. I mean, it's really quite amazing. I mean, I was telling my mother today, I called her. She's She's got dementia, so we had a Zoom meeting this morning. It was such a precious Zoom meeting. And I, she started crying because of a memory I brought it, but it wasn't a bad thing. Right. She forgets who has passed. Right. So I was reminding her about uh, some friends, family, and good friends, and some friends who were coming whose parents had passed. Oh, I think she forgot. She starts weeping. I said, it's okay, because a good cry mm. cleans out your system. It's like a good yeah. laugh. It's the same oh, yeah. chemical. Yeah. And so we were laughing and crying at the same time, playing music, which obviously... Music touches something. I oh, think it's yeah. probably the same chemical. Absolutely. Uh, endorphins or whatever. I get them mixed up. But um, it, it gets you ready to receive God and yeah. live life in a in a beautiful, more beautiful, naturalistic way instead mm -hmm. of just this uh, regimented. Yeah. I mean, the, I, think, I think that our job as pastors, if I could just say this, mm -hmm. and then you can comment. But I think when you talk about discipline and the rhythm of life, mm -hmm. People react. I know I do sometimes too. That it's regimented. That it's rigid. That it's yeah. dry. 
but it doesn't have to be. And I don't think that's right. how God wants us to see it. Right. Uh, you know, not always going to feel like doing your devotions or going to church, but, but you do it anyway because you love God. Right. And you're motivated by, as we said, that love that he already pursued you. Yeah. So that helps the discipline have a lot more oil to it. Yep. Absolutely. You know, the discipline may well, be and the I think, years, but the oil is the spirit. Yeah, and, and I God. think everybody's looks a little different. You know, I sure. think of when you were talking about that, my mom came. So if you're still watching, Mom, I'm talking yeah. about you now. Um, but uh, I, I think about how she does it. Mm -hmm. And for her, she gets, gets up in the morning. And, and sometimes it's at different times. It might yeah. not always be right at the yeah. same exact yeah. time. Right. Yeah, but I think for her, it. her day doesn't really fully start until she's had that mm -hmm. time. Yeah. With God, and she right. she'll be reading. I don't know. I mean, different devotions. I know yeah. one of them she did was the Sarah Young book, um, mm. Jesus Calling. Yeah, she, she's, she did that for amazing. a while, wow. and she did that sure. for you know a year. Rachel mm. and I did that one for a year yeah. uh, before we had kids, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and um, it was great. But yeah. like, like she starts her day with that. She'll read mm -hmm. the scripture that goes along with it, and then she'll spend some time praying, mm. and that's. That's her rhythm of life. Yes, yes. She might, and we might see we have rhythms of life, but and we don't organic, even right? realize it. Yeah, yeah. that's you he's know? created us. For and yeah. Good and point. so um, that's what I think is is cool about once mm -hmm. once you the times where we feel like we're regimented, and I think it, um, in different ways um, it can feel that way if sure. we're too like a, yes. like you said if we're too rigid about it. Right. It starts to feel like a job, like yeah. we have to, I'm doing this because I have to. Yeah. Eventually, the goal is that it just becomes a part of who you are. Yes. Like, and that's yeah, my desire, is that this is something that I... It's like I, brushing your teeth. Well, yeah, like I can't, I want it to be, yeah. I want it to be something like, yeah. you know, this, how I, I got to have coffee. my cup of coffee in the morning. Yeah, I gotta have my cup analogy. of Jesus in the morning, yeah, you know. Because how often? Yeah. And my wife has got me on this too. She's like, "Do you love Jesus as much as you love coffee?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Well, of course." Yeah. Okay, okay, all right. Yeah, and I see where she's going with yeah, it. Yeah. Is we need to have that same desire yes. that you might have for coffee or yeah. whatever it is. Maybe it's tea. Yeah. Um, and I, I when would, you start your day, I would say that the rest of our day with the Lord is qualitatively affected by how strong our morning devotion is. Absolutely. And it does again, it doesn't matter quantity, but it matters that time that you did spend, however uh, however crazy it was or different is your rhythm, right? Yeah. It it will set your day. Yeah. It really will. Absolutely. And you will sense his presence in a stronger way or maybe less strong if you didn't. Give it your best. So. Now, I know we've only gotten up yeah. to verse 12, but I would yeah. love to hear your thoughts on verse 10, 10, where it talks about the fear of the Lord is the beginning mm -hmm. of wisdom, mm -hmm. and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Yeah. Um, it also says something very similar to that mm -hmm. in 1, verse 7. Oh, chapter says one, the, seven. Yeah, chapter 1, verse 7. It uh -huh. says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Fools despise wisdom and discipline. It's pretty cool to parallel those. And I just yeah. thought that was really because uh, yeah. Miss Oli from our church, uh, I had quoted this mm. to a degree, but she found this yesterday when I was doing the podcast. Uh -huh. So she brought up 1 verse 7. Yeah. And then here it comes up again. Very similar. It's worded Probably a little different. other places too. I'm but sure. yeah, I'm sure <clears throat> it's not the only time that no. so obviously. This was important to Solomon. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on that? The well, fear I, of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, mm -hmm. and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Well, it's like what sets your day, this would set your wisdom mm -hmm. or reception of wisdom. And it almost is implied that if there's no fear of the Lord, how can wisdom begin its activi activity in your life? You can't. Mm -hmm. And I, I think this fear of the Lord is... A, Healthy respect for God, not a fear. Oh, what's He going to do to me? Right. Um, not like I got my hand in the cookie jar; He's going to catch me, kind of thing. God's not out to catch any of us. Right. He wants relationship, but right. a relationship that is built on um, not the kind of familiarity that breeds uh, contempt. Mm -hmm. Was it was talk, uh, There's that old saying: uh, the friends, if you end up being roommates. It ruins your friendship, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be that familiar with God that that he lowers himself 
So it is a balance because yeah. I know we were just talking about the prodigal son coming at us mm -hmm. and how about how that God is emotional and affectionate. He loves on us, but we always have to remember too. And I don't think it's a it's a huge leap of oh yeah, I try to understand that. It's there if we just pay attention to it. God being God is higher than us. Right. He says our ways and not his ways. Um, but that's what makes the beauty of his pursuit of us so amazingly beautiful. Yeah. Because absolutely. there's no words. It's like the, the psalm that Dallas Holmes sang or wrote. It's from Isaiah 6. Uh, and he takes this piece. It's about Isaiah seeing God holy. And he, he doesn't even think he can talk. And then God reaches down and touches touch the coal to his mm -hmm. lips. Mm -hmm. And in the song, Dallas says, I saw the Lord. And then there's that pause in the music. An instrumental interlude and then it says and he saw me and that is the beauty of it because mm. I saw the Lord in my fear of him but yet he came to me mm. and that that experience of his paying attention to me in in his all beauty of God mm -hmm. is just wow that's what blew blew me away at 50 when I came to know God again a second time but this time more on, maturely more fully is that what man he, he came to me and yet he's holy i think that's what makes for me this this whole thing yeah run <laughs> absolutely and you don't lose the fear of the lord in receiving that that right. he saw me it becomes more beautiful it's like wow right and, and then it continues with yeah. the knowledge of mm. the holy one so see our fear of the lord and obviously we talked you said mm. it's about respect yes. and this awe of god is the beginning of yeah. wisdom. It's got to be then, the beginning. Nothing so, else is. So, yeah. yeah. So, so we start yeah. off with that mm -hmm. fear, awe, and reverence to God. Yeah. But then the knowledge of the Holy One. So we have to obtain knowledge. The right knowledge. Staying yeah. in His yes. Word. Yes. To have that understanding. And it's not a cerebral knowledge. It's right. It's experiential knowledge. Yeah. Which is cool because your CSB uh, version seemed to keep... Uh, interpreting that word as experience or inexperience yeah i love that because that really seems to be the the juxta of the message in the old testament with these words you just made me yeah. think of an old uh bible study that was out many years ago um and they've revised it a couple times since mm. is the experiencing god yes yeah. that was probably one of the most powerful bible studies or, or book studies yeah. if you will that I'd ever been a part of. Who, who did that? I forget. Uh, Blackaby. Blackaby, yes. Henry um, Blackaby. Henry yeah. Blackaby. Yeah. Yep. And just powerful mm. to think of God in that way, mm -hmm. to experience yeah. who he is, yeah. not just the whole, following a bunch yeah. of rules yeah. or following a regiment or following, mm -hmm. you know. Um, That's cool. It's powerful. It's All right. Yeah. Let's see how much we've got yeah. to go yet because... And then we've, been, we've been going, oh, we don't have much to go. No, All right, 13, so 18, let me, yeah. I'll close this out sure. here with it. Yeah, so yeah. folly, this is verse 13, if you're following mm -hmm. along. Folly is a rowdy woman. <laughs> she is gullible oh and knows nothing. Yeah. She sits by the doorway of her house on a seat at the highest point of the city, calling out to those who pass by, who go straight ahead on their paths. Whoever is inexperienced, enter here. To the one who lacks sense, she says, stolen water is sweet and bread eaten secretly is tasty. Yeah. And he doesn't know that the departed spirits are there mm. and her guests are in the depths of Sheol. That's pretty. <clears throat> that is a powerful. pretty powerful yeah. Yeah, to keep you away from set it. of yeah. like, yeah. okay, wake up here, folks, mm -hmm. boys. Yeah. Boys. <laughs> because... You need to, and I like how it says, um, for the ones uh, calling to those who pass by who mm -hmm. go straight ahead mm -hmm. on their path. So in other words, to me, that was kind of an indicator of yeah. you need to keep looking straight ahead yes, that's right. and pursue voices, so. wisdom. Yeah. It goes back to pursuing yeah. wisdom. And because if you go, if we go into the place where, Lady Folly is mm -hmm. hanging out. Yeah. Then don't, don't we flirt with temptation. You know, yeah, don't flirt with that yeah. temptation. That yeah. goes again, like I said yesterday, with yeah. uh, First Corinthians ten thirteen. Mm -hmm. No temptation has seized you, yeah. except what is common to man. 
but God is faithful. Mm -hmm. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear, mm -hmm. but he will also provide a way out so yes. that you can stand up under it. Yeah. That is a huge That's one for verse. people who wrestle with temptation. Yeah. Um, and this one hits me particularly because... I struggle with gluttony. Mm -hmm. That is my, and obviously that's an obvious sin for me that I wrestle with on a moment by moment basis. Mm -hmm. The one where it says, stolen water is sweet, <clears throat> which I don't go around stealing water, <laughs> but bread eaten secretly is tasty. Mm -hmm. To me, at least for somebody who struggles with gluttony, is I've been that kid who was sneaking cookies out of the cookie jar mm -hmm. since I could can remember. Mm -hmm. I was the one eating that extra sandwich when nobody well, was looking. Can confirm that. And mom can <laughs> confirm that because she had to pay the grocery bill. So she kept going, why is all the food gone? And go, oh, 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 oh. It was, Scott did it. Yeah. You know, that was always my, my go-to. Yeah. And, but yet. Yeah, that's the same, but it, it, I, I think it's interesting that it's painted in the same picture yeah. with falling into yes, that yeah. temptation. Yeah. It may not be a mean. sexual sin, no, right? Could but be. it's a sin still mm -hmm. against the temple. Yeah, that's the body. And yeah, folks, mm -hmm. I'm I am I have to be accountable to that. Yes, we all do. And um, whatever that temptation. Yeah, is. whatever that temptation. And if we could say something about flirting. Because mm. you you mentioned that verse, and I love the version. Whatever you must have met. I think it was the NIV is from. what I was quoting yeah. you then. Um, where it's, it's typically the part where it says God will make a way of escape. So if we're flirting, I would dare say that we're going beyond the limit that God said that He uh, no temptation has taken you, such as a common man. Mm -hmm. But God has made a way of escape. So if you flirt, you're moving yourself beyond that line mm -hmm. where He said He'll give you help. Yeah. So that's why flirting is not a good idea. Right. Because you're moving away from God's protection for you in that moment. Yeah. So there is a certain level, it seems to me, that God is saying, where we're all tempted in a common way. Mm -hmm. And God is not going to give us more than we expect. But if we start turning back, thinking, that, you know, what is it, Solomon, the little foxes have stolen. Mm -hmm. uh, we give in to those little foxes. Oh, we're going to get smashed and we're going beyond God's. Yeah, uh, and and we're saying kind of goodbye, not thinking we are to God. So that reminds me yeah. of another song, um, mm. songs, music. Mm. I think I clearly it's has a great impact memory on both of us. Mm. Um, there's a song that Todd Agnew uh, recorded some well, years back. Heard of it. Uh, yeah. Todd Agnew has it's a great. song called "Still Has a Hold." I think it's called "Still Has a Hold." Um, and there's a line in that song mm. where it talks about I'm holding hands with heaven. But I'm making eyes with hell, Ooh, wow. and, he, and it talks about that inner yeah. struggle yes. between I want to do what's right so right. bad, yeah. I want to do it, you know, and I'm holding hands with heaven. I'm, you know, calling out mm -hmm. the guy, but then I'm kind of looking back over my shoulder, kind of mm -hmm. making eyes at hell, yeah. and you know, back to what, right, yeah, well, whatever feels good. Pretty at the sure moment. you got to make a decision because it's gonna because what happens. Her guests yes. are in the depths of Sheol. Yes. And if you don't know what Sheol is, <laughs> mm -hmm. that is um, was a common term used back mm -hmm. in that time yeah. uh, to refer to hell. Mm -hmm. um, Sheol was something that even the, I think even the pagans understood yes. as Sheol is the underworld, yeah. Uh, yeah. the darkness. It really is. Um, and even know. though it is the grave, it, it, it's a symbol of what? Death. Is of death, of, of that third spiritual world yeah yeah yep. that's true wow. so um but and that and that kind of takes us all the way again mm -hmm. back to genesis mm -hmm. what does sin eventually lead to yes death separation from god yeah separation and from god the kind of death that is eternal yeah yeah and that's what obviously we all want to try to avoid mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and uh so we have to you know so what do we do with this you know mm -hmm. we've talked a long a, a lot about all these things, mm -hmm. and they seem, you know, sometimes they seem at random. Like the other day, the 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 proverb was very eclectic, and it yeah. talked about several different yeah. things. Uh -huh. uh, but this has been the last few mm -hmm. talking about this battle between wisdom and folly. Yes, really is a is I think connects a yeah, lot sure to does. a lot of things. Yeah, and it actually makes me think about too the battle between the flesh and the spirit. Mm -hmm. that yeah. talked about in Galatians. Yes, chapter yeah, I was five. thinking that too. 
Um, right. Because yep. it, it lines it out. I mean, if you want to look up what the battle of the flesh and the spirit is, go to Galatians 5, mm-hmm. starting at verse 19, and yeah. go the, go all the way to the end. Yeah. It'll tell you these are the... I mean, these these are the attributes, of, or not attributes, but these are the they describe mm-hmm. what it looks like to give in to the acts of the flesh. Mm. I'm trying to find it here quickly, but um, you, if you look at look, I'm thinking of Romans seven when Paul talks about the struggle he had between doing what he didn't want to do mm-hmm. and not doing what he knew he should do, mm-hmm. and of course the glorious chapter of Romans eight uh, uh, comes about, and he comes to the realization that uh, it's God that will keep him. Uh, yeah. In that moment, but pretty um, interesting. Wow. Now the works of the flesh mm-hmm. are obvious. Now see, Paul says these are obvious, mm-hmm. right? Sexual immorality, moral impurity, mm-hmm. promiscuity, which is having all kinds of different sex all yes. over the place. Mm-hmm. Um, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, mm-hmm. jealousy, outbursts of anger. Mm-hmm. Or another versions will say acts of rage mm-hmm. yes. or fits of rage, mm-hmm. selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, mm-hmm. and anything similar. I am warning you about these things yes. as I warned you before that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. And then he goes into the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, yes. patience, kindness, goodness, tenderness, faithfulness, goodness, and self-control. Yes. I hate to do it that way and say it real quick like that because there's, yeah. mm, there's so, so much, much to it. that. Oh, wow. um, yeah. But because of our, yeah, I, we've, we've been going for quite a while. I don't want to lose people too much. Um, <laughs> is that these things are important. This is the battle. This same battle is happening right here mm. in Proverbs. Yes. Versus chapters 7, 8, and 9 talks all about these things, just not in the same detail that Paul talks. So yeah. if you need to look that up, too, <clears throat> mm-hmm. look up Galatians 5, verses 19 through 26. Mm-hmm. And that'll give you the full detail yes. of that battle between flesh and spirit. Mm-hmm. That's good. Good stuff. Any other thoughts? Just that this is a house that God is building it's called Wisdom. And Solomon erected the pillars, and then he gets into the details of each room. Yeah. And I think if we see the truths of God as buildings that he's constructing in us, mm-hmm. uh, we can. It, it becomes a little easier to, because there's so much, we get overwhelmed. Oh, yeah. Don't be overwhelmed today. Don't. God's God's with you. And he's the master carpenter, right? Absolutely. You want to scroll down, there might be some yeah, comments in there. And see, what, questions see if there's any questions have. or anything. Mm, Good, good morning, Frank. We're saying hi to everybody. Yeah, Susan. Mom says good talk. <laughs> so okay. Hope hopefully I was honest about everything, Mom. So <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but uh, so these are just some things that um, that I've been kind of going through with trying to get back into mm-hmm. my own rhythm of life yes. uh, with, with the Lord. Yes. Is just, you know, like, if, like I said, if you need something to start off with, right. Jump into consider, the Proverbs. Consider it. You get in, yeah, get something. What, so whatever whatever it is. is. Yeah, whatever it is. Let that, it make sure that it's what he puts in your hand. Yep. Uh, not just because we said it or Pastor Mark said it. Absolutely. It's, it's a tool. But yep. there may be a specific tool, and, and make sure it's connected to the Word, yep. that, that is fit for you for the season that you're in right now. Yeah. Because your season may not be Mark's season. Right. It might not be my season. Yep. But you'll remember it when you look back and... I think shift a little bit and you transition into a new season of your life Amen. and you look back man wow, thank god that i read uh let's say oswald's uh utmost for his highest yeah. oh I thank god i read thomas a campus you know the yeah. imitation of christ wherever it is you're not just reading it because you want to sound or look better impress anybody no it's whatever he put your hand to amen Amen. So don't just do it because somebody said it's the it's the latest hot book right. to read, John yeah. Eldridge. No, God used right. John Eldridge for you at yeah. the time. I haven't read him yet, but I look forward to that yeah. day when God said, it's time for you to read it, Eldridge. Yep. You know? So anyway, good stuff. Thank you guys for listening. We're going to close in a word of prayer. Yep. That? All right. Sounds good. Lord, thank you so much for uh, the word. It's so powerful. Uh and yeah, we went on today 50 minutes. <laughs> we might have broken a record for even the Sons of Thunder, but 
but there's no there's no guilt or weight about that. Mm -hmm. Whoever chimed in, chimed in, maybe they had to go. Some have been here for the whole time of our sharing today, but I like to think it's like the road to a mass. I keep mm -hmm. coming back to that story. I don't know why. Other people are, are seems like they're remembering it. Their hearts burned within them, and at no point in their walk with you as a resurrected Christ. Mm -hmm. Uh, to whoever those two were, some think that Peter was certainly one of them, that the burning in their heart never subsided. It, they never thought, well, this has been awful long, Jesus talked to them. Mm -hmm. It was just like, wow, that snap of a finger, and he's gone. And look mm -hmm. how much time we spent. It was so beautiful. I pray that this would be the experience we had today, not just Mark and I, but anybody watching. Bless mm -hmm. each person today, and thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So uh, if you're if you're still on, and uh, be sure to check out Pastor Damon. Yeah, yes. I believe he goes today on at one thirty yes. today. He goes yep. on Tuesdays and Thursdays from Wakeshma. What's he in the book? No, um, he's he's been separate. finishing up Revelation, okay. and he's yep. moving into Daniel. I oh, believe. good combination. So yeah, so he's yep. combining those things, and so mm -hmm. if you've been following along with him. Check yeah. him out at yes. one thirty, and then Pastor Ralph, you're on tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, nine thirty. Nine thirty, and I'm Moses. shooting for eleven thirty. Yep. Um, wait, what's Can't tomorrow? Ever get tomorrow in the Friday. Friday. No, tomorrow's my day yeah, off, sure. so look for me early yes. in the morning. Uh, it'll be probably six thirty. Okay. So yeah, you'll probably so, be doing another proverb, maybe. Yeah, I'm gonna do yeah. proverbs. I'm gonna hit proverbs ten tomorrow, and so. I'll be talking about Moses and how he was delivered and became. The Deliverer. There you go. Be God bless stuff. you all. Have a good one, guys. Love you. See ya.